One of the most useful ICs that you might come across when working with electronics is the 74HC595 shift register. What this does is it takes in a serial pulse of data and converts that into eight separate pins as a parallel port. This is especially useful for driving uh, LED matrices or driving many things with using just a few pins from your microcontroller. One of the most common uses is to drive these uh, little seven segment LED displays. There's actually eight separate LEDs if you count the decimal place, which uh, are used in things like elevators and uh, digital readouts. Before I bore you with all the details of how the shift register actually works, let me just show you it in action. Right now it's being used to control uh, the 7 second LED that I showed you earlier. And this is a pretty useless program, but it just illustrates uh, what you can do with the register. And it's um, only being controlled with 3 pins from my AtTiny84 AVR microcontroller. You might be wondering exactly how the shift register works, and it's actually quite simple. Uh, let's go through it with an example. Say you want to display the binary value of 1001010110. It's a completely arbitrary number, but let's just use that as an example. Now, what you do first is you'd output the, the least significant bit, which is the zero. Then you'd force everything to move over by outputting the next digit. So you'd output a 1 which forces this to move over. So this goes over one place and you output a 1. Now this is forced to shift. Then you do the same with the next digit. So it all moves over and the same again. And you just keep repeating this until you've outputted all eight bits. And one more. Until you've finally done it and outputted the byte that you want to out that you want to give out to the parallel port as such of the shift register. Actually I lied a little bit what I just showed you was uh, in, in the order of the least significant bit first. What we're going to be using is the most significant bit first. So instead of shifting the, lead, the trailing zero first, we'll first output a one. Then we'll, we'll shift it over to the left and output a zero. So it'll be shifted this way. And then um, same thing will happen again and again and again until finally you're left with your original byte so most significant bit first or big endian order is um, much more useful because it stops you from having to reverse the bytes when you actually pass the pass the data into the routine to shift the data out. The pinout of the device would look something like this. It's pretty standard uh, for all the 595 uh, shift registers regardless of the manufacturer. And uh, well let's start with the basics. You have your power on pin 16 and your ground on pin 8. And then you have your parallel data output pins which are Q0, Q1, 2, 3 through to Q7. Uh, like most things with microcontrollers, it indexes from 0 and goes to 7, uh, which is an 8-bit 8, uh, 8 bit port. Then you have your um, MR pin, which is the master reset. Uh, you can read it here. It says active low. What that can also be um, called is it's the clear clear pin. What it does is if it's pulled, uh, pulled low, then it uh, uh, clears uh, clears the shift register. So um, for most purposes you, you just want to tie this up to uh, 5 volts through a 10k pull-up resistor. And then you have your output enable pin OE which is pin uh, 13. And if you look at the, um, at the table it says that is also active though. So if you want your output to be enabled you pull that down <clears throat> to ground 
and that will let you actually see what's being displayed out. Then you have your data pin, DS, or a serial data input pin. That's where you actually shift the ones and zeros uh, that you need to display. And you have your shift clock, shift register clock input, which is uh, just the serial clock pulse. And then you have your storage register clock input, which is, um, I'll go into that uh, into a bit more depth later, but it's basically a, uh, a second register in this, which stores the previous thing that you shifted out. Just a little side note before I start coding. Uh, the chip I'm going to be used to control everything, the microcontroller, is the Actiny 84 microcontroller, and um, I chose it because it's really it's a really great little chip. It's a cross between the it's almost a cross between the Actiny series and the Act Mega series. It's a 14 pin device, uh, 8Ks of flash, 512 uh, bytes of EEPROM, uh, double EEPROM, and uh, I think uh, 128 bytes of RAM I think, I'm not quite sure, but it's um, really nice because it's got more features and more pins and uh, uh, more things than your tiny, uh, your regular at tinies which have like 8 or 10 pins, but at the same time it's not as big as some of your other at mega controllers like your at mega 328 used in the Arduinos. One really smart thing about this device is that it can be daisy chained to form um, to form a multiple bit shift register. For example, you could tie three of them to form a 24 bit shift register, or tie 10 of them to form an 80 bit register. The sky is really the limit there. And what, how you do that is you'd use this pin here, pin 9, which is a Q7 uh, or QH dash, depending on your data sheet. And you tie that in to the data uh, pin, the serial data input of the next shift register. And you just connect all the STCP and all the SHCPs and OE pins and all those pins together between all the shift registers. This can be really useful um, if you want to connect, um, uh, say, multiple seven segment uh, displays to form a readout that's more than one digit long. Or if you wanted to connect um, an, uh, an LED bar graph, for example, because those are 10 segments long usually. and um, if you just have one shift register, you can only use eight of those segments. So this is a really useful feature that can be um, accessed from the 74 HC595 register, and it's um, really one of the smarter points of the device. So here I've created an include file to drive the shift register, and um, I won't go into too much detail with the code, because uh, programming videos that are 40 minutes long are very boring, frankly, and I've fallen asleep at the computer more times than I'd like to admit because of those. But uh, I'll just give you a quick overview of the program. So basically here we've defined the um, header file and just defined all the port names and uh, pin pin numbers and all that. And just some small macros that uh, turn on the, the data, uh, serial data pin and turn it low. Uh, you could create a subroutine, but because it's just one line, there's no point. And uh, to initialize the device, you just turn everything to output. There's nothing to it. And pulsing the shift clock is uh, just that. Turns it high and then turns it low. Um, then you have the interesting part, which is write to the device. And because there's just one device, uh, I'm creating uh, the, I'm passing an 8-bit integer into the um, into the subroutine. If there are say two devices chained together, then that variable would have to be bigger because um, they have to support 16 bits. But just for one device, um, this is uh, the perfect size. Not too big, just right. Okay, so what you do first is turn your latch pin or your store clock pin low. It's also called the register clock pin, but you turn it low, then you'd uh, shift out your data one by one. So you can see I've created a for loop going uh, from 0 to 8 and incrementing each time. So this if statement is just if there is a byte to be sent, uh, then if there's a 1 to be sent, then turn the data high. Or if there's a 0 to be sent, then turn it low. Um, if you're not sure with bitwise operations like this, then 
I suggest you Google it uh, or read up on your C programming because they're uh, they take a while to get used to. And then um, you'd have to pulse your shift clock, uh, which is your serial pulse. And then, uh, like I explained before, you just shift your data one to the left and do it all over again eight times. If you daisy chain say uh, sixteen uh, two two um, shift versions together, then you make this an unsigned 16-bit integer and you'd make this uh, do this over 16 times but since we just have one device we're gonna do this just eight times uh, of course you could do this up to how many ever uh, how many ever devices you have chained together if you have 10 devices then you just have to have a big enough uh, container a big enough variable that can hold 80 bits. Um, then finally you have to turn your latch pin or store clock pin back high to display the results. So the, um, the program I showed you first is really very basic. Uh, it had a, an array of bytes that correspond to the, um, the, the digits on the display. Uh, that's just specific to how I wired it up. Uh, it will change depending on how you wire yours up and if you have a common anode or common cathode display. Uh, but those um, just represent digits from 0 through to 9. Then you have um, the main loop, which is tiny. All it does is cycle through those digits and does it over and over again with a small delay. Since this is such a useless program, it's just good for, uh, for demonstrating the shift register, I created a simple one digit volt meter rounded up to the nearest volt and it interrupt driven I won't go into the details of interrupts and uh, analog digital conversion but basically it has a, yeah I've declared my variable types as volatile because they change during the program basically it, it has the same um, same arrays this is just the digits with a decimal place this is without then go down Set the interrupt, initialize the device, initialize the ADC, start your first conversion. And since it's interrupt driven, there's nothing in the while loop. You can add whatever other code you want here, for example, to drive an LCD or drive a motor or whatever else you want. And yeah, these are just the subroutines to initialize the ADC and start conversions. And in the interrupt service routine, the ADC vector, um, just created, I've just created the voltage reading uh, as ADC and the first digit uh, just called these random things but I've just done some math to turn that into an actual voltage reading rather than a 10, 10 bit ADC integer I've created a, a, a voltage reading from 0 to 5 or 0 to the reference voltage and this just goes um, this just writes it to the thing to the uh, 7 segment display and does it all over again by starting a new conversion. So this is a really basic um, basic program. I've posted the link to it in the description. If you don't understand anything going on here, I suggest you read up on your C programming or go to go to websites such as avrfreaks.net. There are tons of good tutorials out there. Uh, but once you read up on those, this will all start to make sense and it can be quite rewarding. So anyways, let's build this and uh, program it. Yes, I want to build a voltmeter. And uh, I have some confusing things going on here. Oh, what is that? Uh, oh, this is what it is. Stupid error. That should start it out. Yep, build my voltmeter. And yeah, there. No errors, and let's program it. So yeah, it's still having the uh, old test uh, 74 HC595 program running. I'm gonna hit compile, uh, or rather hit program, and let's see what happens. There, the chip's being erased, and there, it's reading one volt. And as I turn the potentiometer, uh, you can you can't see it, but the voltage reading actually changes. And it does not go all the way down to zero because um, it's actually a pretty bad potentiometer I'm using. But if you see if I short it directly to ground, it's going down to zero. So um, 
next step is to hook this up to a multimeter and see how accurate it actually is. So as you can see, um, it's pretty accurate, the voltmeter. It's rounding it up to the nearest volt. And if you use, if I slowly decrease the voltage, it's reading it out pretty well. Go down to 3. See if we increase it to 3.7, it goes up to 4. So it's less than 3.5, it goes down to 3. And goes all the way down to about 1 volt. And it's pretty responsive, it's going pretty fast. And there you have it, that's how to control a 74HC595 8-bit serial in parallel out shift register. And that's a mouthful, but it's one of the most useful devices out there and it can really help with your future projects.